I'm uh, Kathleen McGill, the head vet for the Yukon Quest uh, sled dog race, 2013 already. And we're here at the pre-race vet check in Fairbanks at Summit Logistics. And we're going to tell you some of the things we do, how we do all the paperwork, how we check the dogs, what is a pre-race vet check. And we do a complete physical on those dogs. We check for a microchip. If they don't have a microchip, we put it in. And if we find anything on the dogs that can be fixed before the race starts, we tell the musher, we tell them how to treat it. And if we find something that's not going to get better before the race, we tell them to take another dog, and they usually do. They check 16 dogs here. They can take 14 on the trail on start day. So they have two dogs as backup. If anything is wrong with the dog, they have a backup. And after they're done with all of this, then they're ready to go to White Horse. You were How many quests have you run so far? I lost count after 20. <laughs> well, I think we're going to tie Frank Turner's record if he finishes. So the goal is to finish with a bunch of happy and strong dogs. So those dogs ran on up there on the glacier all, all summer long? Or? Oh yeah. All summer long, that's where they get the, the muscles. Those Americans are gaining 5 pounds every year. <laughs> <laughs> so are they used to deep snow or so? Not really. Oh yeah, Healy we had a lot of deep snow this year. And plus on the glacier, last year we had, I think they had over 80, no, 100 feet of snow. So at the beginning of the season they were up to their chest. Trying to, trying to make trail for the guests to go around. You're going to do the next one? Yeah, I'll do we're looking for a microchip. All the dogs that run the race have to have a microchip. So I will apply a microchip at the end of the exam, check lymph nodes, and I run my hands all the way down the dog, just making sure they've got enough nice layer of fat across their back. So we listen to heart, we listen to lungs, make sure there's nothing abnormal. We'll make sure he's in racing condition. And I'm going to try and get him to stand up so I can check his legs out, check his shoulders. I know. Stand up, but how about we just do the front first so he's not so scared. Down his triceps, his biceps, making sure the muscles all feel symmetrical. This is checking his pectoralis muscles here in the front. Want to make sure his wrist is nice and flexible. Nothing's wrong there. And then we check the pads. Make sure there's no splits, nothing that might cause causing to limp and not run. We even check the nails. So if the nails are torn or broken, um, this can cause them to limp also. So we want to make sure we check nails. And he is in very good shape. We also do something called body condition scoring, which is giving the dog a number from one to nine that tells us what his body condition is, just like what it sounds like. For a very athletic dog, they should have a score somewhere between three and four. Our pet dogs at home would probably be a five or a six or heavier. You know, we see big fat dogs at home in our practices. They can even be a nine. But an athletic dog, somewhere between three, four, five would be appropriate. And he is probably about a three and a half. And he's reacting like a normal dog to the noise around him here at the pre-race vet check. And he's in good shape. Uh, 68.8. So all your dogs came out fine? They're all good. They're all good, yep. It's good to have vet checks done. Now it's race time. Did you uh, bring 16 dogs too? I did bring 16, yep. 
Yep. Well, yeah. So we'll see. I don't. I don't tell you too. I don't know who's gonna go. I. I uh, there's 16 pretty strong dogs here, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. But uh, gotta make a cut at some point. So it'll probably be in Whitehorse. <laughs> but yeah, we're, we're we're stoked. Can't wait for race time. Good luck. <laughs> Thanks a lot. What were you doing up there? I was uh, checking the spot tracker mount um, to put the GPS tracker made by spot um, onto the front of the dog sled. And we're just seeing what fits, because every sled is different in construction, so it's just a matter of seeing what works on the, on the sled to make these um, little spot mounts, um, little spot units, you know, secure. Last year we just put them into booties and uh, safety pinned them, and then this year we're you know, doing whatever we have to do as far as making a little tray to like secure it on the front of the sled. Excuse why right, I didn't work, right. but not that one. Not that one, the rider gets the stick. So you're taking 16 dogs down there? Yeah, no. I brought 19 because I don't even know what 16 I want to check. I got 19 I'm, I'm really happy with. I, uh, not yet. Not I'm pretty yet. sure the three that won't vet check today, I've got those figured out. But the other ones, no. Um, I don't know. I'm going to run tomorrow and find out. Yeah, that's my last run. To, you know, so tomorrow's the deciding day. We'll figure that out uh, tomorrow, I guess. And then you take only 14 down there yep. and go with it? Yep. I've done that uh, in the past and I had an accident and ended up um, having a dog shipped last minute. Um, this is, a, this is a little different group than what I've had. I've, I've been free running them all year. They live together in a barn. They're, I mean, yeah, they, I mean, they're 16 or 19 males that act like a bunch of two-year-olds. You know? It's fun. It's been a really cool training year. I'm real happy with them.